This lesson's about the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research. The model is called CIFR. The objectives of this lesson are to discuss the need for investment in knowledge translation for evidence-based practice. We'll illustrate the use of the knowledge to action process and describe a framework, the CIFR, and its application. What strategies work to, in which context to reliably implement evidence-based practice? That is the challenge before us. So here's the background. We need to tailor strategies based on the context. We assess the context or the setting conducting an organizational assessment. Then we choose the evidence-based strategies that might work within that context or setting. And here is how to make sense of implementation theories, models, and framework. You need to describe a guiding process and then explain what influences outcomes and evaluating the process. So then you look at a process model. Also, you have to note that there is, are deep valleys between research and practice. And implementation interventions are usually in the second valley where you take clinical science and knowledge and translate it into clinical practice and policy decision making. This is called the translational continuum. So CIFR was first published in 2009. Please note, Laura Dramschroeder is located at the VA in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Here is what the consolidated framework looks like. Here you see the core competency components of an intervention. Sometimes we have to have them adapted to be able to fit our context. You always need to look at the outer setting, which could be federal government policies or payment mechanisms. We also need to look at the inner setting, which is the context within which the intervention is being placed. We also need to focus on the individuals involved, the patient, RNs, techs, providers, NPs, whoever it may be. And then we need to look at the process by which we would go about making the change. Also important is to understand that sometimes interventions need to be adapted. So within CIFR, because it's a consolidated framework from 18 other frameworks, there are five constructs and 39 concepts. Here's a list of the constructs. Process, intervention characteristics, inner setting, outer setting, and provider characteristics. Implementation factors are associated with successful implementation. QI teams need to discuss those factors that will be of particular relevance for the project and clarify which implementation phase the factors align with. So this are, these are the CIFR domains. Outer and inner setting, provider characteristics, and process. As you can see in the outer setting, this could be patient needs and resources, cosmopolitanism, peer pressure, external policies and incentives. In the inner setting, you see the structural characteristics, networks and communications, the culture, which is very important, implementation climate, and readiness for implementation. And then provider characteristics, knowledge and beliefs about the intervention, self-efficacy, individual stages of change, identification with the organization, and other personal attributes. And of most important is the process, planning, engaging, executing and reflecting on evaluation. So there are very specific 
layout of the concepts within the areas of constructs. And within CEPR, each are described. On this page, you can see the many different concepts within the construct of intervention characteristics and their description. So in the construct of intervention characteristics, it includes the intervention source, the evidence and strength and quality of the intervention, the relative advantage of the intervention, adaptability, trialability, complexity, design and quality and packaging of the intervention, and most importantly, the cost. Each are described in detail. And here's the construct of the outer setting. It has four concepts, patient needs and resources, cosmopolitanism, peer pressure, and external policy and incentives. Each are described in detail. And here is the inner setting constructs and all of the concepts. So you see structural characteristics, network and communication, the culture, and the implementation climate, which includes the tension for change, compatibility, relative priority, organizational incentives and rewards, goals and feedback, and the learning climate. And finally, readiness for implementation, leadership engagement, available resources, access to knowledge and information. And each of the inner setting concepts are described in detail. And here are the characteristics of the individual constructs. And the concepts are knowledge and beliefs about the intervention, self-efficacy, individual stages of change, and identification with the organization, and other personal attributes. Each of these are also described in detail. And here are the process constructs, planning, engaging, which includes opinion leaders, formally appointed internal implementation leaders, champions, and external change agents, and then executing, and finally, reflecting and evaluating. Each of these are described in detail. So how do you apply CIFR? It guides a QI project capacity in addition to the needs or organizational assessment prior to implementation. It informs the assessment of barriers and facilitators to implementing a health services intervention in a specific setting. It complements existing models and theories. So you use CIFR to complement the knowledge to action process where you assess barriers to knowledge use. And that includes the outer setting, inner setting, and individuals. So in summary, much research does not address the practical needs of stakeholders responsible for introducing healthcare interventions into organizations to achieve better outcomes. However, CIFR guides systematic evaluation of implementation of healthcare delivery and interventions and produces actionable evaluation findings intended to improve implementation in a timely manner. So now we're going to talk about your assignment. Think about the following elements. Complete the worksheet as assigned and remember QI is an iterative process and your worksheet may change as you learn of new or additional information or find new evidence. So we're going to examine implementation factors. You start with the process, intervention characteristics, inner setting, outer setting, and provider characteristics. So implementation factors are associated with successful implementation. Discuss those that will be of particular relevance to you. Which implementation phase do they align with? In regard to process, it includes engaging, planning, 
executing, reflecting, and evaluation. So engaging includes attracting and involving individuals in the implementation and use of the intervention using combined strategies like social marketing, education, role modeling, and training. And then in planning, you developing an implementation plan in advance, one of four fundamental activities in the plan, do, study, act cycle for implementing change. And then executing, which is carrying out the implementation according to plan. Quality of execution may consist of the degree of fidelity of implementation to plan courses of action, intensity, quality and depth of implementation, timeliness of task completion, and degree of engagement of key involved individuals, like the implementation leaders in the implementation process. And finally, reflecting and evaluating quantitative and qualitative feedback about the progress and quality of implementation accompanied with regular personal and team debriefing about progress and experience. Evaluation includes traditional forms of feedback, such as reports, graphs, and qualitative feedback, and anecdotal stories of success. Objectives should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely, like the SMART rubric. You also have to think about the intervention characteristics. So the intervention source, or you have to look at stakeholders' perception about whether the intervention is externally or internally developed. And then trialability, the ability to test the intervention on a small scale in the organization and to be able to reverse the course or undo implementation if warranted and then evidence, strength, and quality. Stakeholders' perception of the quality and validity of evidence supporting the intervention for the desired outcome. And also complexity, the perceived intricacy or difficulty of the innovation reflected by duration, scope, disruptiveness, intricacy, and number of steps required to implement. Then relative advantage, stakeholders' perception of the advantage of implementing the intervention versus an alternative solution or status quo. Also, design, quality, and packaging. The perceived excellence in how the intervention is bundled, presented, and assembled. And adaptability, the degree to which an intervention can be adapted, tailored, refined, or reinvented to meet local needs. And finally, cost. The cost of the intervention and costs associated with implementing the intervention, including investment, supplies, and opportunity costs. Each of these intervention characteristics need to be examined. And the outer setting, the patient needs and resources. The extent to which patient needs as well as barriers and facilitators to meet those needs are accurately known and prioritized by the organization. Cosmopolitanism, the degree to which an organization is networked with other organizations implementing or using the same intervention. And peer pressure, the metric or competitive pressure to implement or an intervention typically because most or other key peer or competing organizations have already implemented or in a bid for competitive edge. And finally, external policies and incentives. External strategies to spread interventions, including policy and regulations, governmental or other central entity, external mandates, recommendations and guidelines, pay for performance, collaboratives, and public or benchmark reporting. And of great importance is the inner setting, the structural characteristics, the age, maturity, and size of an organization, networks and communications, the nature and quality of social networks and formal and informal communications within an organization, and the culture, norms, values, and basic assumptions of a given organization. 
All of these inner implementation factors need to be considered. So the inner setting includes implementation climate examination, absorptive capacity, shared receptivity and extent to which use of the intervention will be rewarded, supported and expected within the organization. Is there tension for change? The degree to which stakeholders perceive current situation as intolerable or needing change. Compatibility. The degree of tangible fit between meaning and values attached to the intervention. How those align with norms, values, and perceived risks and needs, and how the intervention fits with existing workflow or systems. The relative priority. Shared perception of importance of implementation within the organization. Organizational incentives and rewards. Extrinsic incentives such as goal sharing awards, performance reviews, promotions, salary raises, or increased stature or respect. Goals and feedback. The degree to which goals are clearly communicated, acted upon, and shared with the staff an alignment of that feedback with goals. And the learning and cl climate. Leaders express their own fallibility and need for team members' assistance and input. Team members feel they are essential, valued, and knowledgeable change partners. Individuals feel psychologically safe to try new methods and sufficient time and space for reflective thinking and evaluation. Each of these six items are important to examining the inner setting and the implementation climate. Also, in the inner setting, you look, need to examine readiness for implementation, tangible and immediate indicators of organizational commitment to its decision to implement an intervention. Is there leadership engagement, commitment, involvement and accountability of leaders and managers with the implementation. Is there availability of resources? The level of resources dedicated for implementation and ongoing operations, including money, training, education, physical space, and time. And access to knowledge and information. Ease of access to digestible information and knowledge about the intervention and how to incorporate it into work tasks. Each of these are important to understanding readiness for implementation. Also, the characteristics of individuals are important. Their knowledge and beliefs about the intervention, the attitudes towards and value placed on the intervention and familiarity with facts, truths, and principles related to the intervention. Also, self-efficacy and individuals' belief in their own capabilities to execute courses of action to achieve and implement goals. And individual stage of change, characterization of the phase an individual is in as he or she progresses towards skilled, enthusiastic, and sustained use of the intervention and individual identification with the organization. How individuals perceive the organization and their relationship and degree of commitment with that organization. This may affect staff willingness to fully engage in implementation efforts or use the intervention. And also other personal attributes like traits, such as tolerance of ambiguity, intellectual ability, motivation, values, competence, capacity, and learning style. Each of these are very important factors during implementation. That ends the instruction for the assignment for this lesson. Your task is to think about each of these implementation factors within the five constructs of CFER. Please refer to the worksheet. Thank you so much.